So, I caught this in an interview with a Blackie Lawless of Wasp. This is from Guitar World. A recent revelation is that you're okay with using backing tracks live. What will fans be hearing at the Wasp show? So, uh, there's been talks about Wasp now using backing tracks for, uh, you know, for, for their shows. Uh, let's read on. Why is it okay to use backing tracks? It's because we don't have the personnel. We were doing stuff from the Crimson Idol and there's a hundred piece orchestra going on there. Taking that on tour would be impossible financially. Uh, great point. The first time we did Crimson Idol Live, we did it without the orchestration. Did it sound good? Yeah. But when we did it with the orchestration, I stood in the middle of the room and rehearsed and I swear to you, it was like a religious experience. If I'm a fan, this is what I want to hear. So basically what he's saying, he's using backing tracks to elevate the experience of the audience. You know, things that are supporting the main band, I would say. So that's the reason I do it. It enhances the experience. I want people to hear the records the way they were intended to be heard, not like a fash. Oh, this is a word I can't say. Faxim... Faximal. Faximal. Google Translate. Let's go. Facsimile. Facsimile. Oh shit, okay. In Swedish, facsimile. Facsimile. <laughs> Do you have to censor that? Facsimile. 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 Yes, let's continue on. <laughs> That's fair. People assumed it was your voice and the guitar is being simulated with tracks. All somebody has to do is record and listen to all the mistakes. Then they would understand. You can try as hard as you can, man, but you're gonna screw up. Rock and roll was never meant to be perfect, and even if you try, it ain't gonna be. Why I wanted to talk about this is because this is something that I'm thinking a lot of now when, uh, you know, about my touring situation next year. I'm going as an opening act for, for Burnt and Charles Bertu on Escape the Internet Tour. And it's gonna be a very tightly packed tour and there's not enough room to bring a lot of people so we have to be really efficient about what we bring that's you know why have you seen me do all this uh, setup thing here i want to bring a very very small rig with me that will fit the bus uh, that we share with uh, you know uh, two other drummers and you know all the people that needs their extra stuff and uh, i was thinking about this too like i would love to bring out someone to do keyboards and all that but it's just easier to have it all on backing track you know, as long as the rest of us play uh, live and all that, you know, for Stars and Ponies, for instance, which is heavily synth wave in the background where you have a lot of blippity blops and shit like that, if we would remove that from uh, the live experience, it, it wouldn't be the same song, you know? So I'm definitely going to have, you know, backing tracks on this live tour happening. But obviously the, the, the lead guitar, the bass, the drums, they will be, they will be live. So it's to elevate the experience. And I thought that was a really good point right here. I don't think anyone disagrees that ele elevating the experience, uh, people want this. Like if someone would replace the drummer with a backing track, that's a problem. If someone would replace the guitar, the lead guitar player with a backing track, that's also a problem. So I think, I think we all agree on this, no? Good, good point, Ola. 